My name is Gary Rabinovitz. I work at Reebok International World Headquarters located in Canton, Massachusetts. Reebok is a subsidiary of the Adidas Group. I've been running the additive manufacturing RP lab now for nearly 17 years. We started out with our first SLS DTM 2500 CI, which still works today. And we're looking to upgrade uh, eventually on that. So I'm gonna be talking about Reebok Checklight, what it is, what it does, and a lot of history, a lot of work went into this project. And it really would not have been possible to do it even in the four year time period that it took. And you, you may think four years is a lot of time for a product to be developed. But a product that is that important, that is an indicator for concussions for athletes and for many, many activities, it's very important that we did our due diligence and make sure this product was correct right from the get-go. Back in 2009, two of my colleagues went to a traumatic brain injury conference. And sitting in that conference for, I believe it was two or three days, when they left, they're talking it over and said, you know, with all of the brain issues going on right now, most recently there was a big uh, American football lawsuit and it was 380 million dollars something to that effect that was put in the bank for all these players who are suffering from concussions there was really no indicator how do you know someone has a concussion so a good analogy there i like to use is you're here you're watching the football american football is a great analogy you're watching the game and there's a pile up kids are, they're getting up getting up slow and then you look and there's one athlete just still on the ground. So slowly makes his way to his feet, but he can't stand up. Well, teammates come help him and he's hobbling. So what happened? The coaches know, the kid knows automatically. He sprained an ankle. His parent up in the top of the bleachers says, oh, he sprained an ankle or he hurt a knee. It's visible, you can tell. But when there's a hit to the head, it is very, very difficult especially a coach on the sideline or a parent to say, wait a minute, I think something's wrong with my kid. So the Reebok check light, in this same example, there's a big pile up on the field. You know, it's a slow process. Everybody gets up back to the huddle. Nobody has any indication at all that possibly one of these athletes just got his head smashed pretty good, but he was able to get up and just move that few feet to get back into the huddle and the game continues. So that was how this all came about. We need an indicator. We need some kind of a device that says, yeah, somebody got hit out there. We need to pull them out of the game. We need to see exactly what happened. How are we going to fix this? So my colleagues put their heads together, and they came to me and said, we're going to be using you a lot. We've got a lot to do. We worked with an electronics company, because Reebok footwear equipment, but we knew nothing about electronics. So MC10, a company inside of Boston, partnered up with us to take care of all the electronic side of this project. So I'd like to start with a video. And this video gives a really good overview of the entire product. And then I'll be back to talk about all of the uh, prototypes and how we move the product along. The Reebok Checklight. Checklight is an impact indicator worn on the head with or without a helmet during sports and fitness activities. Checklight sensors continuously measure the impact an athlete experiences, providing coaches, athletic trainers, parents, and athletes with a visual display of impact severity. A green light means check light is on and functioning. A yellow light indicates you've sustained a moderate impact. A red light indicates a more severe impact. 
Advanced algorithms continuously process sensor data to give athletes real-time impact information with a simple visual cue. These sensors are connected with flexible electronics to a microprocessor. Reebok Checklight, an extra set of eyes designed to lead athletes on a pathway to assessment. This is the Reebok Checklight, a head impact indicator. It's not a diagnostic tool, but it does make the game safer because it measures the force of impact to the head, it counts the number of hits. The Checklight is a real-time teaching tool to help athletes, to help coaches take head impact out of the game. Reebok Checklight, we've got your back. So the video gave you basically what it does. It's a really simple process, but to get from that initial concept to market four years, there were 465 individuals that we used for test subjects. They were ages from youth all the way to adult. There was over 1,500 units of experimentation. So a unit would be either a full practice or a game. And there was over 15,000 drop tests on multiple materials. Ice for hockey, turf, soil, you name it. We had to cover just about everything because you could lead to major lawsuits on this kind of technology if you weren't accurate and on. The electronics companies, you saw some of the big words up there, gyroscope, accelerometer. Accelerometer was good, it told you about the force. The gyroscope, you might remember hearing gyroscope if you watch the airplane movies and you got the pitch of the plane. Well, this also talks and will record how the impact is made, how the head is turned, how it hits, with the force, the impact. So we really did what was needed to do to make this product really work and be efficient. Very simple, elegant, so some of the important things. So here is just a few of the activities that this product can be used for, not only helmeted sports. Right now we've uh, had a lot of contact with the Pony Club. Hundreds of thousands of people riding horses, people, parents putting their children on horses and sending them into the woods. They have no idea what happens once they get in there. So they're showing a really great interest. So back when this research was done, there was 113 million estimated participants in helmet-required sports, with an additional 34 million in non-helmet-related. This could be European football. Head-to-head -head contact, the head hits the ground, head hits elbows. So all of this, this product can be used for. At this traumatic brain injury conference, they, they'd realized, and this is what really set them off, my colleagues, one in every hundred participants in a sport will receive a traumatic brain injury. I mean, that's a huge number. It was a serious problem. So in the beginning of the development, we started out with three major sports. The cages on some of these things were built in nylon, SLS, and painted. But the catcher in baseball, as you can see, has the, quite regularly, can get a baseball into the head or a backswing of a bat. So this there was something we definitely wanted to check for. The second one was hockey. Hockey can be very brutal. You get hit against the boards, your head can hit the ice. Again, we had a lot of subjects in the area we could use for these sports as well. And the third one, American football, which has, again, been in the news a great deal. So these are just some of the types of drop tests that we did. So now we're into the stage of, okay, this is the idea. This is what we want to do. Well, how do we get started? It's not like we can have volunteers that are going to stand there and let us punch them in the head, although on the video, those are all members of my, my team, my part of our team. And I'm not sure how many times he had to get hit in the head for the video, but uh, he did have the headgear on. So this was the, one of the initial SLS units we did with some electronics on it. What you can't really see completely, and you will, off to the 
side is actually a youth head made in SLS. So we took full advantage of what we had. So in the initial trials, we needed some kind of a box, some kind of a unit that was going to hold these electronics and try to get the feedback. So this box was made to actually hold electronics, a rather large D-sized battery, two of them, and placed on the back. And then they were trying to work out how the electrodes, everything was going to work. So here it is side by side. So in the early stages, nobody's head was getting hit. Everything was concept and how we make this better and what, what are we looking for? What is the final product going to be? And there was a lot of work to get to that point. Now we did use at least five different types of technologies to get to the final stage of where we were here. This is a stage now where the D-sized battery, okay, that worked. We know that we can communicate between the sensors and, and back to the, the power unit. So now let's try to change and try different things. So we're, now we're trying, okay, let's try a watch battery. You know, let's see how watch batteries will work. So we've got SLS. These parts could be put together. That front cap actually would work. We could screw that on, put the battery in. Very important technology here was color, full color, Z Corp uh, 510 Spectrum. We wore out one and we were on our second system. So the colors are very critical. In the very early stages, you can see you've got a green light, means the product is working properly. It's blinking. Yellow, the caution sign, it means, hey, you know, there's been a hit. Maybe the kid, the individual needs to come out of the game. You have to take a look at them. And then you've got red, which is a stop sign, and everybody knows what that means. You need to stop, you need to come out, and you need to get evaluated. So this is just the beginning of some of the, the, the doors of what we were looking at. So here's a close-up view. Great detail, great color, and these parts were invaluable because not only did the developers in-house need to say, okay, these are going to work, but then they had to bring them back to MC10, the electronics company, and say, is this something you can work with? Or do we need to change it again? So we kept back and forth. So at this point here, again, color. Now we're down, we said, let's try a AAA battery. Let's see how that'll work. So batteries kept changing, the shapes are changing, and you can see the little knob on the, the top right. So that knob was going to actually stick into the flexible electronics. So now they're, they're getting a little bit closer to having a one-piece unit. So this stage was very important. The uh, battery pack, actually, we had some with all of the wires were hooked up. And, the, and once it was hooked up to the actual check light, the lights would work. So we were really starting to move along. Everything looks good. Here's the first look at the flexible electronics right now is just a plain flex pad. There's really nothing in here yet. But we've got the SLS and we've got some PolyJet attached. So now we're starting to get a little bit, little better. All right, so we went from that initial big ugly unit with a pack on the back and now we're down to a single unit. So again, everyone's feeling good. Every day I'm making not one, but they want five, they want ten. Let's try it in different materials. Let's keep going. So stereo lithography we don't have in-house, so there's something I had to outsource. So now they wanted to be able to see inside. You can see on the tip now we've got some electronics going in there, getting a better look at it. And wow, you know, this is it's really cool. We can actually see, we know what's going on. So again, things are really starting to move and change. Uh, well, let's, let's, let's try a little FDM. We've tried everything else. Let's see how the FDM cap works. And we've got uh, places for the lights. Everything's good. And this is actually the backside of the AAA battery pack. We're like, okay, so this really, this could work. One of the issues is the AAA battery, the watch battery, they didn't hold the charge very well. So we needed, you know, this is really close. And let's see what happens. So then we had a mock-up skull cap. You know, here's your SLS piece. But then you start, they look, and then the first thing is, like, who's going to wear it in the first place? It doesn't look good. It's, it may work, but what happens if somebody gets hit in the back of the head? 
in the neck area. We're going to cause more injury than we are checking to see if there was a, a concussion. So it was a sad day, and it's you know, but it was positive. Okay, so let's go back. I mean, we can do better. What are we going to do? And here's the close-up. This dummy head came in really handy. We used it extensively for a lot of uh, the development. So now, heads are coming together. More CAD guys are involved. All right, we need to make this unit smaller. We have to do something more, and we just we got to keep moving forward. We got to keep pushing. So here are some other examples. Uh, in the bottom, you can see that's more just the electronic side of it. The one, uh, the green, here right behind me. That now they're looking to go. Wait, this this could work. But the one in the blue with the black little door, they're like, whoa. Let's see. How about if we try a USB port? We have enough electronical information that it feeds. We can, we can have the charger, everything. But is that the best you can do? Can you give, we need something a little better. So explain to them what they needed to do. Came back with PolyJet and a living hinge. What a beautiful idea. We've got PolyJet, yeah, we can do that. That's too easy. First thing we did was, again, full color Z Corp, and you can see the USB port. So they worked and worked through it, and then we came in, and here it is. We've got our PolyJet piece, living hinge, snapped together, and this, the final product is just above it. So you can see it's really now things were really rolling. They're like, okay, now I think we're, we're ready. So this here is just a picture of the complete different end caps that we really went through to get to the final stage of where we needed to be. At every stage, there was something a little different, something they didn't like. We've got batteries, we've got clear, we've got USB. Z Corp, full color, very, very helpful, especially in the footwear world. Everybody, they want to put an upper on the bottom. They want full color. We don't have a model shop anymore. The additive manufacturing eliminated them with full color. So this really helped do what we need to. You could slice through parts, and the electronics people could look inside and say, whoa, this is going to fit. We can add this thing. We could, the accelerometer, we can do all this stuff. And this really was a key, this particular part. So here is the final three steps. We've got full color. We've got the polyjet piece. Beautiful, with dual materials, even better. So now we have spot where the lights are going to be, so it looks almost exactly what it needs to be. Of course, it's not clear and it's not electronic, but it's exactly what they wanted. So at this point, the electronics company said, this is perfect, we, we've got to go. They were able to move, move forward on it. And here's a close-up. You know, great technology, surface finish, polyjet, and that final step was so important with that living hinge. And here's the actual product. And on the product, you can see you've got a battery symbol. Then we've got the triangle for the yellow light. And then we've got the red stoplight. So we're fortunate enough to be a part of the technical competition at the 2014 Additive Manufacturing Users Group. And we were able to, we actually placed first in a technical competition. Now, this was really a big thing for Reebok. It was our first attempt at wearable technology. And it is just, it's won, I believe, four awards now, and really is something that is good for everyone. It is really going to help the head trauma situations that are happening all over. One of the biggest things with head trauma is it's not really the first hit. You may have a concussion, but the problem is if you don't recover properly and get out of the situation, it's the second hit that could lead to permanent damage. So with the check light, that is really critical. And, and there's a short a story. Before I get to the, the final story, and we have a video with that, this is it. Nicely packaged, small box. Manufacturer suggests a retail, $120. So what comes in the box? Very important. We have the USB. Now, the USB connector is not just to help charge the battery. You can hook it up to your computer at home, and the parent now can download 
all the information from that day's practice. The battery lasts up to six hours. So that's also very important. You know it's not going to cut out during the middle of a game. The kid, uh, individual cannot erase what happens. So the parent plugs in, they can see how many hits because it'll actually tell you hits that didn't register as yellow. But it will tell you the ones that are yellow, it'll tell you the ones in red. The skull cap can be machine washed and used again. So this is how the packaging looks within the box. So before I start this video, what this video is, it's the after effect. So right towards the very end of the season, you're actually listening to the parents of these children and individuals that were test some of the test subjects that we used. And the important thing to take from this, in the beginning, everyone's taught to tackle the same way, and a lot of kids use their head. It's just because that's how it works. But as the season progressed, every one of these teams, including parents, they had to sign off on a liability form. If your child sustains a red light, they will be coming out of the game. There is no ifs, ands, or buts. They are out of the game because you have agreed to this test. And the parents were, okay, you know, everybody was on board. So by the end of the season, it changed the game. These individuals, these kids, they learned how to tackle properly without head down and, 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 and driving straight into people. So if we can start it on the grassroots level, then by the time they get to upper levels in high school and, and, and college and the pro professional levels, it'll be instinct already that they won't tackle the way they used to tackle, that they were taught. So the product is working already, and proof is here. And as you listen to the parents, you'll see what I, what, how it is. As a, as a parent, I'm excited to do anything I can to avoid injury for my child. People are stronger, they're faster than we used to be. I, I hate admitting that. I won't admit it to my grandson, that's for sure. But uh, they really are. They're hitting a lot harder. Even this year, we've had so many concussions on our team. And uh, the kids have been out for you know two, three, four weeks. And so it really is a major, major issue. I have a lot of worries with the way that the kids are hitting so hard and they're bigger and taller and everything. So I think Checklight has, um, is, a, is a big advantage to give us an indicator if Brendan should have a concussion or um, how hard the hit was. My son has only had one time where he's had uh, to come out of the game where the check light device turned red and basically he got checked out. Thankfully, he was okay. A couple other kids had to sit out because it turned red and they actually did have a concussion. So it's a great mechanism for us to quickly analyze our kids from that standpoint. As a parent and a nurse, I think it's fabulous. I'm really thrilled to have it, to be able to identify. The coaches can't possibly see every hit on every child, and so that way it's a great way for them to say, oh, we didn't see this, but he got a hard hit, we should check him out. A lot of kids won't tell you if they've taken a hit. Uh, they don't know to even come and check and be evaluated, so we felt like it was a nice uh, uh, safety valve. Okay, so, um, so that just triggered a, uh, a red light for a more severe impact. Yeah, we've seen we've seen some yellow lights go off. We've seen some red lights go off. Um, one I can remember, there was a red light that went off, and he did. Uh, we did pull him out, and we sent him home. Took him to the doctor the next day, and he was confirmed. He did confirm have a concussion. Um, he was out for I think two two weeks. I think it was two weeks before he came back. I'm a pediatrician as well, so obviously um, preserving brain health is the most important thing to me. And so anything, any tools that we have, we can give the coaches to give to parents to keep kids safe um, is something that is really really welcome. Andrew is loving uh, wearing the check light because of the fact that he actually did have a suspected concussion before. So he thinks it's a great idea. And he does, so we charge it up and he consistently wears it every single time. As a coach, I've certainly seen times when kids have, you know, had some contact and you see that it's hit a certain threshold and that the light's gone off. So you get them with the appropriate people on the sidelines to just make sure we take them through a process and we're not putting them in the game when they're not ready. Having the check light makes me feel a lot more comfortable because the concussion thing was definitely something I was nervous about and being his first year um, I was even more nervous since he's never played before so that definitely gives me a sense of security. It seems like it's really the future of football there's so much concern about making maintaining the sport but keeping it safe and healthy for our kids so I think
think this is the kind of the, really the technology that's going to be necessary moving forward to ensure our children are safe. Let's go, boys! Who's house? All right, so this proof right there that the parents really were 100% behind this project, and it seems that it's just growing and growing. Again, I mentioned earlier about the equestrian. It was right after the Kentucky Derby. We had uh, one of the developers from our group went down to Kentucky, and that's where he had met with a lot of the uh, Pony Club, and, and they said, you've got to be kidding me. We need this. So we feel that it's really getting out there. The newest updated versions are now going to be just a headband because in European soccer, you know, they don't want to wear a skull cap, too hot. But with a, a headband with the same unit, you can still get the same effects and not have to wear the full skull cap.